Should you bet on the Missouri Tigers this weekend against Kansas State, plus my official pick, and Logan Reichert signs with Mizzou. This is a big deal, folks. So let's talk about all this coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And you know what, how appropriate to in fact start with that quick little read because I want to start with a simple question. Should you bet on Mizzou tomorrow? Well, short answer yes with an if, long answer no with a but. Yes, shout out to all you Simpsons fans out there and Reverend Lovejoy. But in all seriousness, I think the answer is yes. I do think you should bet on the Tigers tomorrow. But wait, don't go running away just yet. Come on, let's get some romance back into this relationship. You don't even let me cuddle with you? Come on, what's the deal? No, let me make my let me make my take. Let me allow me to set this whole thing up because I think the key for Missouri tomorrow number 1 is to get to Adrian Martinez early defensively. He has far more experience than Brady Cook, no doubt about that, but he also has far more experience failing and playing for Nebraska teams that not only turned the ball over frequently, failed to protect Adrian Martinez frequently, but also they they heard a lot of boo birds. So that's got to mess with a young man's psyche a little bit. Again, Adrian Martinez has definitely been turnover prone in his career. So if the Tiger defense can get to him early, obviously I think Missouri's chances go way, way up. And honestly, defensively, how do you not sell out against the run early? If Adrian Martinez is beating you through the air, then then what can I say? Missouri's going to have to score a lot of points to win this ball game. But let me clarify real quick on what I mean by sell out against the run. I'm just talking about keeping bodies near the line of scrimmage or or in the box because I'm certainly not talking about constant all-out blitzes or guys having to cheat outside of their gaps or responsibilities in run in run action to make a play. I wouldn't worry so much early in this ball game in the first quarter if Kansas State is churning out say 4 to 5 yards on the ground pretty consistently. Because if last year's any indication When Deuce Vaughn, the Kansas State running back, is held without a 20-plus yard rush, he's still a really good, effective player, but not only anything that ultimately can't be contained. You'll notice against, even against a team like Texas Tech, 15 carries for 52 yards, and I say like Texas Tech, a team not exactly known for being a defensive stalwart, but I got to say, The last few games of the season, Vaughn was incredible. He was hitting big plays of 65 yards, 80 yards, 42 yards. And in those games, yes, he had massive, massive production. But again, a three-game losing streak for the Wildcats last year. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Iowa State, all obviously good units. Vaughn was held in check in terms of explosion. And at the end of the day, his yards per carry weren't particularly impressive either. So again, if you're Missouri, you have to put guys in the box like you did against Florida and South Carolina and victories in Columbia last year. You just got to do it and force Adrian Martinez to to throw it. I I just think that's obviously the game plan and what what Kansas State is going to do about that, what Adrian Martinez is going to do about it. Well, that's the question. Now, offensively for Missouri on the other side of the ball, I think the Tigers need to establish an effective running game. 
And I emphasize effective because a lot of times people think establishing the run simply just means handing it off a lot early. Well, no, I think Missouri needs to be effective with those runs. But regardless, regardless if Missouri is effective early or not, I would be using a lot of play action fakes and trying to draw those off ball linebackers and safeties that are near the line of scrimmage in that three down front, three linebacker, three, three, five that Kansas State is running. And I would absolutely force Kansas State to defend the middle of the field through the passing game at all levels, by the way. That means crossers over the short part of the middle of the field, drag routes, crossing routes. That means slants and posts over the middle part of the field, pop passes to the tight end, and yes, also deep passes down the seams too. The whole deal. Because to me, with that defense, especially if you're going to fake them a little bit, the linebackers pretty much have to commit to the run a little bit. With the two safeties back, most of the time, especially the middle of the field is going to be a little bit vulnerable. I think at times Eli Drinkwitz has been a little bit resident, a little bit, a little bit, what am I trying to say? Maybe reticent was the right word. A little bit um, hesitant. There we go. A little bit hesitant to attack that part of the field his first couple years at Missouri, especially with the tight end game. But if you're ever going to do it, this might be the week. Based on how they played defense last week, Again, with those two deep safeties, this might not be Luther Burden's biggest week statistically, at least if he stays on the outside for the whole game. If they move him inside or run some type of routes that can get him down the middle of the field, which is certainly a possibility, then maybe I'll look stupid if I'm saying that. It just seems like this is more of a slot receiver game for Missouri than it is going to be an outside receiver type game. Honestly, even though I am going to tell you, yes, give the seven and a half points. And also, I think I even like the plus 250 over at betonline.net. Just pick Missouri to win outright. Bet $10 on Missouri to win, and you'll get $25 back if they actually win this ball game. I think that's worth a shot. And because if this game were actually in Columbia, if we were playing this at Faro Field, I think I would pick the Tigers to win straight up and feel fairly confident about it simply because I think Missouri has the clear advantage at quarterback. But since it's in Manhattan, I'm just not ready to go there yet. I can't pick the Tigers to win straight up. But again, you give me that value, I'll take it. As far as betting goes, again, I'm willing to give that 7.5, willing to give the plus 250 for the straight up win. And this is really a bet on of all things, not only do I think Cook is an advantage at quarterback, but I think Missouri has to be better defensively than it was last year to make that bet. And I'm not even talking about the first half. I'm talking about the second half of last year against Florida, against South Carolina, where obviously the defense was much improved, but I think Missouri even has to be better than that to win on the road against a very solid Kansas State unit. A new scheme for Missouri – a lot of new transfer players in the middle of that defense, by the way, like Tyron Hopper, Jaden Jernigan, Josh Landry, DJ Coleman on the other side of the defense, Christian Williams up the middle. That's a lot of new bodies and guys who look good in week one. And as I've said before, week one's been a pretty good harbinger, either positively or negatively for Missouri the last few seasons. So I'm choosing to mostly believe what I saw last week was was fairly real. I think this is, is an improved Missouri defense. Just how improved, I think we'll know a lot, obviously, after week two against Kansas State. But hey, once again, I'm telling you, bet on Missouri. Don't pick them to win straight up in, in some pick them contest or whatever. But if you're going to get the plus 250 over at Bet Online, definitely take it. And once again, yes, today's episode is brought to you by bet online one of our longest sponsors and by the way no matter what you're into maybe you, there's plenty of other college football games to get into of course but you've even got esports you've got live betting on everything from major league baseball to to mixed martial arts boxing golf you've got political bets entertainment bets heck they've probably got bets on the new game of thrones show at some point who which character is going to die first well find out head to the website today or use your mobile device 
to learn more about the trends and action over at Bet Online, where the game starts. Well, obviously, being the Homer Missouri fan that I am, I would love nothing more than to tell you that the Tigers are going to win tomorrow, but the part of me that is an objective podcaster, broadcaster, or whatever you want to call it, somebody who likes to actually have some real integrity. I want you to not just think I'm spouting off opinions based on nothing, because when I actually do my homework here, it's just it's tough for me to pick Missouri. Listen, after week two, if Missouri looks really good tomorrow, I'm going to change my mind and start thinking different things about this team's trajectory. But after week one against a fairly weak Louisiana Tech opponent, I just can't go that crazy at this point, especially given that the Eli Drinkwitz era so far on the road has been rough, to say the least. And if you're going to look at it, if you're just going to ba- break it down in fairly basic terms, well, I did give Missouri the advantage at quarterback. And that's no small thing whatsoever. If Adrian Martinez is bad tomorrow and Brady Cook is good, well, the chances of a Missouri victory are pretty darn good, at least a lot better than they would be otherwise, to make the most obvious statement of the day so far. But when you look at the head coach, I got to give the advantage to Kansas State so far. And that's less of a dig at Eli Drinkwitz than it is a compliment to Chris Kleiman and the program that he's built so far post Bill Snyder. Also, Kleiman just a little bit more time to build his program. So I just have to think they're a little bit farther along, further along at the same time. Well, in the transfer portal era, you do have an opportunity to plug holes quickly. And after week one, it sure does seem like Missouri has plugged some holes. But beyond that, beyond just the quarterback and the head coach, let's look at the what football outsiders always calls the five factors. And these five factors, no matter how much football changes, these five factors were as true in 1900 as they are in 2022. You've got efficiency, explosiveness. Basically, what, what does that mean? Efficiency, are you moving the chains? Explosiveness, how, many, how often are you hitting big plays and getting huge chunks of yardage? Also, field position, red zone efficiency, and turnovers. Really simple stuff, but also stuff like red zone and turnovers, well, they're really, really volatile from week to week. Stuff like efficiency, though, and field position tends to be a lot more steady. Also, explosive plays can clearly be volatile from week to week as well. But yet, still... When I really break these down, just in terms of efficiency, the Kansas State offense against the Missouri defense versus the other way around, the Missouri offense against the Kansas State defense, I just have to give enough respect to Deuce Vaughn and to DJ Giddens and that whole Kansas State rushing attack. I'm going to give them the edge in terms of efficiency. But explosiveness, you know, Kansas State has plenty of explosive players at their skill positions. But at the same time, with Adrian Martinez at quarterback, I'm just not sure that he's the guy to get those guys the ball sometimes. I think Missouri has plenty of explosive options at receiver. Also, I think Nathaniel Pete has some get up and go, some explosiveness in him. And Brady Cook, just a better option at quarterback to get him the ball. So at the very least, I'll give that a push, if not a slight edge to Missouri. Now, field position, both teams are are really good at special teams. Good kickers, good kickoff guys in particular. Punting, you know, Missouri, obviously a new punter, Sean Ketting. I'm, I'm pretty confident in Ketting so far, and I'm pretty confident in Eric Link in that unit. So I'm going to give that a push as well. Red zone, again, because of the rushing attack, I'm going to favor Kansas State there. But finally, turnovers. Again, this is about the quarterback position. I think you got to favor Missouri in terms of turnovers. Adrian Martinez is a guy who will put the ball on the ground in terms of fumbles and throw it up to you too. So Missouri D-backs, hopefully they're going to be in some zone a lot of days, have their eyes on the quarterback. Well, be prepared to catch that football. Get those gloves ready to go because that could be an obvious game changer. And coming up, Missouri finally gets one of its highest targets 
on the offensive line for 2023 and also why I think Missouri fans shouldn't fear the rain on Saturday in Manhattan. Coming up right after these quick words. And in a move that's been expected for a while now, if you follow Mizzou recruiting closely, Logan Reichert, a six foot seven, three hundred and forty five pound offensive tackle from Raytown, Missouri, has committed to your Missouri Tigers verbally. Of course, he had offers from the likes of the Georgia Bulldogs and the Florida Gators. Also, well, it appeared Missouri actually beat out Oregon was probably his the biggest suitor at that point, but Logan really touted his relationship with Marcus Johnson, the offensive line coach, is probably his deciding factor. But as I discussed a while back with Sports Illustrated's John Garcia, offensive linemen are really tough to project from the high school level, but man, it sure helps when you have really, really projectable SEC size in my opinion, because obviously 6'7", 345. Here's what's scary. You look at Logan Reichert at 345 pounds. How do I put this nicely? He doesn't even look particularly like he has a lot of excess weight on him or anything, but I'm sure he could drop a few pounds, 345, but my goodness, he's. it's not as though he's slopping out of his uniform. Let's put it that way. So, this is, this is a big-time get for the Tigers. Rivals.com has him as a top 100 player in the country, fifth-best player in the state of Missouri, seventh-best nationally at offensive tackle. So, obviously, if Georgia wants him, hey, that's about all you need to know, right, at this point. But, again, like I said, Missouri missed out on some other key targets at offensive line, but I did say early in the offseason that, hey, you just get one of those guys and it's a big deal it's still a win for this recruiting class. So, hey, I'll stick with that and say big-time deal for Missouri, and hopefully maybe this gets the ball rolling with some other commitments. By the way, just one more note here from Dave Matter on Logan Reichert. If indeed he signs with Missouri, as we all expect at this point, he would be, according to Rivals.com, Missouri's first four-star offensive lineman from high school to commit to the Tigers since the 2015 cycle. Gee, what happened in 2015? Uh, anybody anybody looked into that? I'm curious. Well, anyway, actually, you know what? Let's not do that. But here's what we should do. One more thing. Let's take one more look at this Missouri-Kansas State ball game. I know a lot of people online are suddenly worried about the weather because it looks like there might be a decent bit of rain during the ball game tomorrow. Well, first of all, I'll just say here's something I've learned over the years. I know a lot of people like to panic and make a lot of conclusions and try to get an edge as soon as there's rain in a forecast, whether that's for fantasy football, daily fantasy, or betting over at betonline.net. But I've done a lot of those of all three of those things over the years and for the most part the rain doesn't really affect the game that much, or at least not in any sort of predictable way. Is it possible that at some point a ball slips out of a punter's hands or something and that's a big play in the ball game? Sure, that could definitely happen. But my point is there's not really – I wouldn't start changing my over-under totals based on this. Now, a snow game, kind of the same deal. Here's what I'd really – Actually, more so than precipitation. Listen, unless it, we're talking about the 2018 monsoon in Columbia, South Carolina, that's a different deal. But that wasn't just heavy rain. That was wind. That was gale force winds as well. So if you want to talk about something that's going to ground the Missouri passing attack, or really both passing attacks, and make this a, a total throwback you know, 50s style, handed off 50 times kind of game, it's going to be wind. And so far, just a quick Google search, the expectation for wind tomorrow is about 12 miles per hour. That doesn't seem to me to be that big of a deal. 12 miles an hour, big whoop. Friday, it's 93 degrees in Manhattan, no precipitation, and it's seven miles an hour. So again, if it were 25, 30 mile an hour winds, 
that's what you should keep your eye on. If it's suddenly the forecast or the current rain is, oh my God, before kickoff, there are 25 mile an hour winds in Manhattan, something like that, then yes, definitely adjust your expectations accordingly. But just based on the wind, or excuse me, just based on a little rain or precipitation, history and experience and wisdom tells me that I wouldn't overanalyze that too much. But you know what? Thanks for joining me as we overanalyzed this Missouri-Kansas State ball game. I had a good time with it. Hope you did too. You know what? If you want to know more about the Southeastern Conference, some big-time games, especially Kentucky against Florida, well, I know who's got you covered. It's Chris Gordy with Locked On SEC. So make Locked On SEC your second listen today. Once again, that's Locked On SEC. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.